Well, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. I know this is uh, sort of a retro service going back to uh, sometime in March and uh, April uh, as we did our services online back then. And uh, we are now uh, having service online tonight. Uh, let me just briefly fill you in as to why and uh, then we'll go on with our service. Um, the other day uh, we were notified that Eleanor Johnson uh, has tested positive for the coronavirus and uh, then just shortly after that we found that Greta had also tested positive for the coronavirus and so uh, the last time these two ladies were in our church, in the church building that we can uh, think of, would have been uh, last week Wednesday. And uh, according to uh, the guidelines, a person is supposed to quarantine themselves for 10 days um, if they have been in contact with someone who has... Uh, been tested positive for this virus and so for the better part of wisdom we just thought that uh, we would just not have church service uh, that automatically uh, removes everybody from everybody's um, presence in the church uh, for those 10 days so um, we are looking at possibly having church again this coming Sunday um, however there is a possibility that we will not. Um, Carol Brink has also tested positive. However, she has absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. And uh, she is going to have another test done. She really doesn't believe she has it. And so she's going to be tested again uh, to be sure. Uh, my cousin Curtis also was tested. Uh, he was feeling ill yesterday and this morning. And so he was tested. He should get his results back today. Uh, if they do test positive, um, we will more than likely not have church uh, service in the building this coming Sunday. Uh, we will do it virtually like we are right now and have, a, have one service that day. Um, but I won't know until later on today and possibly tomorrow uh, what's going to happen with that. We're just trying to keep people safe, uh, nothing to fear. Uh, I'm not worried about this. Uh, um, I guess I, if I'm more worried about anything, I'm concerned about people's attitudes towards this more than I am the virus itself. Uh, Devetta and I, because of our proximity to people, have also been tested. We have, our, we have not received our results yet. We have contacted our missionaries that were here this weekend to let them know and uh, if we find out that uh, Carol and uh, Kurt are positive, and, and even if Devetta and I are positive, we will then be in contact with a bunch of other people uh, who we've been in contact with. So uh, we're just trying to uh, mitigate damages and trying to be as safe as possible and uh, being obedient to the rules and also at the same time obedient to our Lord. And so uh, we're gonna go ahead and have our church service virtually today. And I will be in touch with you to let you know about Sunday. Um, with that, let's do this. Let's open with a word of prayer. We'll sing a song, talk about our prayer list. I'll bring you a short message and we'll be done for this evening. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are blessed. And I know that after uh, what I've just shared with these people, uh, it might not seem like such a blessing. Uh, but God, truly, we are still blessed. Uh, even in the midst of our greatest trials, we have a God that loves us. And said that he would never leave us and never forsake us. That, Lord, you are always going to be with us. And uh, we trust you and we thank you and we praise you. Uh, we do pray for those who have been diagnosed with this virus, of course. And pray that, God, your healing hand would be upon each of them. And uh, use this time today to glorify who you are in our lives. We love you. We thank you for all that you do. And uh, thank you again for this opportunity to have a church service virtually tonight. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, I don't have the words on the screen for you, but I believe that most of you know the words to just a closer walk with thee. And so we're going to sing just a couple of verses, maybe the first and last verse of just a closer walk with thee. 
and uh, then we'll take a look at our prayer list. And so let me grab my guitar here. All right. I need to scoot forward on this chair. <laughs> here we go. about just walking closer with the Lord and that should be our desire that should be our hope and our prayer that every single day of our life we would walk closer with the Lord and do his will and uh, that's what we're, we're our desire is so let me take a look at our prayer list with you tonight if you have your bulletins handy there is a prayer list in there and of course we want you to add Eleanor Johnson to your prayer list I talked with her this morning. I've talked with her every morning uh, since she has uh, shared with me that she's had this diagnosis. And uh, this morning she did sound better than she has in the last few days. And uh, so thank the Lord for that. Uh, she's up and around. Uh, she's uh, doing some housework there. She is quarantined until the 21st. And so, uh, but she is feeling some better today. So continue to pray for her. And also with uh, Greta Aldrink, I talked to Greta. Uh, I didn't haven't talked to her today yet, but I did talk to her yesterday, and uh, she feels fine. She's uh, doing well. Uh, both of these ladies have been told that they have a very mild case of this virus, and praise the Lord for that. That they might be able to get through this. Uh, Greta, as well as as uh, Eleanor, has been quarantined in her house. And uh, so she will not be with us for a while. Uh, but just pray for her that this doesn't uh, get any worse and that uh, she might get better and be able to join us again soon. Uh, it might be that if we do not have church service this coming Sunday, um, we might not see her for a while because she's heading uh, out west. So uh, let's pray that maybe we can have church and uh, be able to fellowship with her once again. Uh, pray for Carol Brink. I'm praying that she finds that she is negative, but if she is positive, once again, she feels very, very uh, fine. She's out mowing her yard and working in the yard and doing all sorts of things. And so uh, just pray for her and uh, that she would recover if she has it. 
pray for my cousin Curtis. Uh, he too um, was not feeling well. He went to prime care and they gave him a test. The doctor said that there's a likelihood that he may have this virus. And so we need to pray that uh, that uh, maybe this test will come back negative and maybe he's got a flu or something. Uh, Devetta and I went into Spectrum today uh, through our doctor and we were tested this morning. I have no idea uh, what the results is. They said it'd be 48 to 72 hours before we would know. Uh, Kim and Christy Myring have been uh, notified and Kim and Christy are being uh, tested this afternoon and uh, Jody and Ruth Miller have been notified and at this point there's been no symptoms there and so they're going to hold off on being tested until uh, they hear more from me about uh, Curtis and, and uh, uh, Carol or if they start to develop symptoms. Um, so uh, Denny and Kathy Olson uh, also Denny uh, Kathy was not feeling well uh, the other day but she, she wasn't at church when she wasn't feeling well and uh, Denny um, and Kathy have a schedule to go in and be tested as well just to be sure uh, whether they do or don't and so um, we're just trying to trying to do the best we can to keep each other uh, accountable and, and healthy and safe and uh, so praise the Lord uh, for all that he's doing in our midst. Uh, we ask for prayer for Deb Hostetter's dad. Uh, he was in the hospital and they had actually called in hospice uh, because they were not expecting him to recover uh, from his illness. Well, praise the Lord, he, uh, he recovered, has been eating food and talking to the family and doing uh, remarkably well. And I believe with all my heart, it's simply because of prayers, because of your prayer that God has answered those prayers. And so um, thank you for your prayers. And uh, he's not out of the woods by any means yet. However, he is doing much, much better than he was before. Um, Greta asked us to pray for Alexa Tulsa. Uh, she has cancer and only uh, according to um, the doctors and the results that they've got a um, uh, very short time to live unless God does something miraculous in her heart and life. Uh, I did pray uh, the other day that she would know Christ as her Savior and Greta came to tell me that her and her family, they are Christian people. She knows the Lord as her Savior and so should, should the Lord choose to take her home, uh, we know where home is and praise the Lord for that. So, uh, but continue to pray for that family if you would. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Linda asked that we would pray for Amber, her daughter. She was having stomach issues, lives out in Wyoming, and asked that we would lift her to the Lord in prayer. Um, I'm just looking through our list here to see anything else that pops out to me. Uh, Dave and Renee Edwards, of course. Uh, Dave has uh, been diagnosed with cancer once again. Um, pray for Sue Shuhart as she continues to look for a home. She's, praise the Lord, allowed to live at Greta's house during the uh, winter months, but uh, during that time she uh, should be looking for a place of her own, and so pray that God will open a door there. And uh, thank the Lord that Sue Middleton found a home. You prayed for that and praise the Lord that she found that home. So wonderful, wonderful news there. Now there's a lot of other prayer requests on your uh, list. Oh, one other one. Uh, Patrick Vanderswag has gone into business for himself with a friend of his. And he asked that we would pray for him and his business as well. And so if you would pray for them, we sure, him, we sure would appreciate that. Um, I think that's about it. Um, let me have a word of prayer with you and we'll get into our lesson tonight and uh, get our service going. Father, we thank you once again that we can come to you in prayer. And uh, Lord, we are truly blessed to know that uh, when we close our eyes in prayer and humble ourselves before you, that you said that you would hear our prayers and that God, not only did you say you'd hear them, but you'd answer them. And uh, what a blessing, what a blessing to have a God that loves us so much that he not only listens to what it is that we say, but also uh, desires to 
at times give us the petitions of our heart. And we pray that God, as we do pray, that these things are within your will. And uh, God, that you could uh, answer these prayers in accordance to how you see fit. And we do pray for all of these who have been diagnosed already or who may be diagnosed with uh, this coronavirus. God, your hand will be upon each one. I thank you that uh, so far uh, the cases have been very mild, especially in our elderly uh, uh, members. I pray that God you'd help them to recuperate very quickly and be able to join back together in fellowship very soon. And Lord, for those who may have uh, believed that they had this virus, but find that they do not, pray for whatever illness they do have, that it might uh, go away soon. Uh, Lord, we pray for our church as we take a look at these situations and ask that God you give us wisdom on how to proceed and what to do. And uh, thank you again for all that you do in our lives. Pray for this young girl, this Alex, that the uh, Lord has this tumor. Father, we understand that uh, according to man's wisdom, uh, there is little to no hope that uh, doctors would be able to do anything to uh, sustain her life. But God, we also know that you are a great God and that you are able to do above and beyond what we could even possibly uh, think of or imagine. And uh, Lord, if it would be within your will to take this tumor from this girl and to allow her to have a normal life. What a blessing. What a testimony. At, at the same time, God, if you choose to take her home and she knows where she's going, I thank you that, God, she's had a testimony in her life already. And either way that, God, you might be glorified in whatever is done. And uh, we just want to be faithful to pray. Do pray for Sue Shuhart as she's looking for a home and pray that you might open those avenues for her and provide her with that permanent place where she could uh, move in and stay and not have to be moving from place to place, but she could call it home. And uh, just ask that God you'd work in that way there. Um, and uh, Lord, also we pray for uh, Linda's daughter who has been uh, having problems uh, with uh, her stomach issues, and uh, just pray that God, your hand would be upon her, and uh, that God, if uh, if possible, that you might heal her and restore her. Uh, pray for uh, our friends and neighbors. Thank you for all of those around us. Pray that we are a good testimony to them. Pray for our Sunday school uh, services and our people that are coming. Uh, what a wonderful day we had this past Sunday with uh, I think eleven or twelve kids and uh, what a blessing and pray that God you would just watch over us and take care of us and use us for your glory we love you we thank you and we praise you in Jesus name we pray amen all right well let me just give you a couple of quick announcements so we have a um, an outing scheduled for this week Saturday at Lewis Farms um, as of right now uh, none of the people who are involved with our youth, nor our youth themselves, uh, have been in contact with anybody uh, that may have had this virus. And so, uh, as we see it right now, everyone in our youth department should be okay. Um, we're going to keep an eye on this throughout the day today. And if things change, we, I will get with Shannon and Nita and we will make a decision as to what needs to happen. However, as things stand at this moment, um, we are going to uh, proceed with that, uh, that outing at Lewis Farms. We're going to be leaving the church here at 10 o'clock. If you're a part of the Sunday School Department, you are welcome to go for free. We need to know if you're going to go, so please call and let us know or send us an email at uh, nrbchurch at nrbchurch.com so we know how many to get tickets for. Um, if uh, you're not a member of the Sunday School and you'd like to go, the tickets are $12.99, and uh, we'd be glad to buy those for you. That's the group rate. If you don't pay the group rate and you just go and pay at the door, it'll be $17.99. So uh, you save $5 by going through us. But um, uh, we're looking forward to that. It should be a fun time. And so if you're interested in going, give us a call 
and uh, let us know. Uh, on October the 28th, that is the last Wednesday night of this month, we are going to have our Harvest Festival and Hobo Stew. Uh, we just somebody asked me the other day, how do you make a hobo stew? Well, uh, we start with a pot of water. Uh, we put some baked potatoes in there. And, uh, I'm sorry, boiled potatoes in there, uh, chopped up. Uh, we put some beef in there, uh, already cooked. Uh, I put a little Creole in there and uh, uh, just a few things like that. And then we just dump soup in. Any kind of soup that comes in, anybody brings a can of soup, we open it up and dump it in. And uh, uh, we have never had a bad batch of soup. Now, we don't put any fishy type products in this soup. I mean, nothing, no uh, oyster soup, no uh, carp soup, <laughs> just nothing that is uh, fishy in nature. So, uh, but anything like beef stew, tomato soup, chicken noodle, anything. Uh, we just dump it in the pot, and it always comes out great. We have a wonderful soup. If you'd like to bring cornbread, that would be delicious with it. All right. But uh, that will be starting at 545 on October the 28th. We're going to have prizes for the best-dressed hobo and hobet. Uh, and we're also going to have our trunk or treat that night for the kids. And so we have some games and activities for all the ages. And so we're looking forward to having a wonderful time. That's October the 28th. So I hope you'll come and be a part of that with us. Um, and I think as far as announcements go, that's about it. Uh, there might be a couple others, but uh, we'll get to those later on. So if you have your Bibles handy, uh, we are going to be starting tonight in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. And I thought that we'd kind of go off the rails just a little bit as to what we were talking about. I'll save the... Uh, series messages that we've been studying uh, for another time. And I wanted to talk to you tonight about the will of God. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard for us to understand perfectly the will of God. We can't see everything that he sees. We don't know everything that he knows. And so for us to perfectly understand the will of God um, might be at some times difficult. However, there are things that we can know about the will of God. And so tonight we want to just spend a few minutes talking about those things on the will of God that we, we do know, those things we do know. And so we're going to start with uh, the first one is this. Uh, we know that it is, it is God's will that we are to be saved. That, that we know is true. God sent his son Jesus to die for our sin uh, so that we could be saved. Uh, if it wasn't his will to be saved, it would have been foolish for him to send his son to die. And so that, that is the overriding will of God, that all men would be saved. And I, I told you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 3 and look at verse 9. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward. Listen, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Now, I know that you know as well as I do that not everybody is going to be saved. In fact, the Bible is very clear that there is a very wide road that leads to uh, destruction. And uh, there's a lot of people, many it says there be, that find it. And there's a very narrow road that leads to eternal life and life everlasting, and few there be that find it. So uh, by the verses that we found in Scripture, it says that uh, not everybody is going to go to heaven. But that doesn't mean that that's not God's will. It is God's will that everyone would go. In fact, he has made it possible for anyone to go to heaven, any single person, any person. Uh, you'd say, what about the murderer? Absolutely the murderer. What about the abortioner? Absolutely the abortioner. Uh, it doesn't matter what you, what you come up with for a, a sin. Uh, God sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for all the sin of mankind. And the greatest sin, the only sin that will actually send you to a place called hell, is the sin of rejecting this grace, this this loving gesture on God's part to provide a way for you to be saved, your sins to be dealt with, and you to go to heaven. If you reject that and you die without Christ, well, my friend, that, that sin is unpardonable. There is no way that you can be saved 
after you die. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 says, who, and that who there would be God, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of truth. You see, God wants every single person to be saved. If you don't know Christ tonight, I have good news for you. You still can be saved. He desires for you to be saved. Now, what is the next thing we're going to look at tonight as far as the will of God? Well, it's the will of God that you would be saved. And once you are saved, it is God's will for you to be spirit-filled, to have a spirit-filled life. Listen to these verses in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. It says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. It's believed that at this time in the, in the area of Ephesus there, that there was a, a lot that were uh, worshiping uh, false gods. And they were doing so by, uh, at that time, using alcohol as part of their worship service. And people would get drunk and they would do all sorts of lewd and, and just, just filthy things. And um, Paul was saying to the church of Ephesus, uh, you need to be wise. Don't be unwise. Be wise and understand what God's will is. Don't, don't let the world look at you and think of you as one of these unbelievers. Uh, don't be filled with wine and get drunk and that sort of thing. He said, don't do that. Instead, let the world look at you as different, being filled with the Spirit. Uh, Christians need to understand that God has called every believer to pursue uh, what he has called um, a, a, a saving grace and to pursue him in their walk with him. He's called every, every person to avoid um, the sins of this world. In, in short, uh, the Lord's will means to, for us to pattern our lives after the life of Jesus, to uh, make him our example, our role model, and, and to try and pattern our life after him. We, we need to remember that Christians are new creations because Jesus submitted to the will of God. When Jesus was here on this earth, he, he several times had said, I, I'm here to do my Father's will. I want to do what God, my Father, wants me to do. And uh, we should want that as well. We should want to live that kind of life as well. In fact, when, when he was on the cross, he cried out, uh, To tell us die, it is finished! Uh, after doing God's will uh, obediently. He obeyed God to the, even to the death of the cross. And uh, when he did, he rescued us who uh, love him and commit our life to him. He, he rescued us from that sinful lifestyle, those, those that were committing dark and shameful deeds and those who were living a life of, of frivolous folly. And uh, We don't need to live that life. And now the Spirit indwells us and he enables us to uh, imitate God, to walk in his love, to walk in his light, to walk in his Spirit. And uh, we just need to have a spirit of thanksgiving for God God's Son, Jesus, giving us that opportunity. And it is God's will that we be filled with the Spirit of God. If we are, and you're in Ephesians chapter 5 sometime, take a look at verses 19 through 21. It tells us how a Spirit-filled person acts. It talks about, in verse 19, about singing. And, and uh, what a joy-filled heart you have if you... Uh, walk in the Spirit. It talks about thanksgiving in verse 20. And in verse 21, it talks about submitting ourselves one to another. Hey, listen, that's a Spirit-filled life. It's God's will that you'd be saved. It's God's will that you would be filled with His Spirit. It's God's will that you would be sanctified. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 through 7 says this, Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. 
For ye know what commandments we gave you in the Lord Jesus. For, listen, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, that everyone should know how to possess his vessel in, a sanct in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, con I knew I was going to mess that word up, in concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such. And, he, and we also have forewarned you and testified, for God hath not called us to uncleanness, but unto holiness. God desires that we would be sanctified, set apart, that we would be different than the rest of this world. And we're not supposed to look like them, act like them, be like them, go where they go, do what they do, say what they say. Uh, our life is to be set apart, different completely different from the world. Now, that doesn't mean that Christians can't wear blue jeans. That doesn't mean that uh, we all have to get our hair cut a certain way or that you all have to have wireframe glasses. I mean, uh, you, you can carry that to a, a ridiculous extreme. But there are some things in our life that need to be different than the world. And when it comes to sinful activity... Or those things that are right on the line of sinful activity. We should err on the side of Christ. We should always put our testimony, his testimony, in our life first. And be sanctified, be separated, be set apart, be different for him. God wants us to be saved. He wants us to be spirit filled. He wants us to be sanctified. And he wants us to be submissive. In First Peter chapter thirteen verses, or chapter three, two verses thirteen through fifteen, it says, "Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for punishment of evil doers, or for the praise of them that do well." For so is the will of God, that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. Again, at this time, there were Christians um, uh, that uh, were, uh, or, I'm sorry, there were uh, unsaved people who were uh, not doing the will of God. They're not doing the, the laws of man and, and just doing whatever they thought they wanted to do and just uh, devil may care sort of attitude. And, and what Paul was saying is, is uh, Christians are to observe man-made laws carefully. As long as those laws don't conflict with uh, the clear teaching of the Bible, of God's word, of our scripture, uh, we're supposed to obey those laws. And uh, the reason for that is not for the law itself, but again, for our testimony that we shouldn't allow people to run around saying, oh, well, there's a lawbreaker. He's not a Christian and blah. Uh, our, our best defense against slander, against criticism of our behavior is to live a life uh, of good behavior. And if you live a life filled with good behavior, doing the right things, um, then people don't have anything to say. There's uh, nothing to criticize you for. They can't call you out on things. And uh, so we need to be, we need to be uh, uh, submissive uh, to the laws that God has allowed to be placed here in this earth. So saved, spirit-filled, sanctified, submissive, and sometimes to suffer. I know that doesn't sound very, very exciting. First Peter 3.17 says, For it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Uh, again, that kind of goes back to the last one about doing the right thing. But, you know, even when you do the right thing, sometimes uh, people are going to say things about you. Even when you do the, the right thing, sometimes... Uh, people are going to criticize you. 
Uh, I just look at the world today and, and how that uh, uh, people are calling uh, good evil and evil good. And, and sometimes they look at people that are, are, are good people, uh, Christian people. And uh, they, they talk poorly about them because of what they believe and how they live their life separately. I, I think of our vice president, Mike Pence, who uh, took a stand and said, uh, I don't meet with women uh, by myself. I just don't do that. Uh, that is something that protects me, it protects my marriage, it protects my testimony. Uh, I have said to our leadership before and to myself, uh, we should not meet with women by themselves. Uh, it's just, it's not a good idea. It protects me, it protects my marriage, it protects this church, and it protects the testimony of God in our life. And, uh, and yet, uh, some would say, well, that's kind of ridiculous. I remember when Mike Pence said that he was going to do that. Now, people just criticized him like crazy. Oh, how archaic is that? What does he think these people are going to do? Jump him and blah, blah. He, he got ridiculed for that. Hey, listen, uh, sometimes, sometimes we're going to suffer for well-doing. But listen, it's worth doing. It's worth doing. It's always worth doing. Uh, and so uh, God has said that we need to be saved, spirit-filled, we need to be sanctified, we need to be uh, submissive, we need to uh, sometimes suffer, and we should be satisfied. We should be satisfied. Listen to what it says here in verse in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The fact that God works everything together for his, for his good, for those that love him, I mean that, and most of us know that verse in Romans 8, 28, uh, that he works everything together for, for good, for those who love him, for those who are called. Uh, it, it's the basis of this sort of idea that we give thanks uh, for everything. Because, well, if God's working everything for his good, then it must be the will of God. And we should give thanks, give God thanks for his will. Uh, if you're in that passage, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, verses 16 and 17, just before that says, uh, we are to rejoice evermore. Verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Uh, these three things in, in verses 16, 17, and 18 they're not just good advice. It's the will of God for every Christian. Uh, they're totally God's will that we would that we would uh, rejoice and we would pray and, and that we would uh, uh, thank God for all the things that He does. Uh, they're clearly clearly it's important to God for us to do that. God's will means that we would have joy in our life. We would have prayer in our life. And we would have thanksgiving in our life. Hmm. That doesn't sound like a bad life. Could you imagine having a life filled with joy? A life talking to God who created all things and loves you and wants to talk to you and wants to answer your prayer and to help you and to guide you. And a life thankful, just being grateful for the things that you have in this world. I think that sounds like a pretty good life to me. And that's the will of God. Once you get saved, he implants the spirit, his spirit in you. And as you relinquish yourself to God, he fills you then with his spirit. And once you have that filled spirit, the spirit will help you to separate yourself and the things that you have done in the past from those things that you do now. You'll want to be submissive to God's will and to the work that God does in and through you. And once you do that, you are going to be satisfied. The ultimate goal in God's will is that you be satisfied with the will of God. There's a little song that uh, some of us used to sing, I'm satisfied with Jesus, 
satisfied with Jesus. I, 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 listen, I hope that's true. Are you satisfied with Jesus? He said he would be my comfort. He said he would be my guide. Well, well, I look at my hands. My hands look new. I look at my feet and they did too. Ever since that wonderful day, my soul's been satisfied. Well, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied that the will of God is the right thing for your life and the right thing for my life. Well, I hope this little segment today has been a blessing to you, and I'm sorry that we couldn't get together for church tonight. Uh, we'll get together soon, and uh, thank you again for watching this. If you have any questions or any comments and you'd like to call, uh, you can call the church phone, 616-546-9142, or you can call my cell phone, 616-403-3247. might be the better way to reach me, 616 616- 403-3247. Uh, Devetta and I are staying away from folks until we have our results back. And so uh, we won't be seeing you personally, but know that we love you. And uh, if you need something, we are just a phone call away. Give us a call. We'll be glad to talk to you. Um, thanks again for watching this. I pray you have a wonderful evening. Let me pray with you. We'll be done. Father, what a blessed night it's been. Thank you that your will, your will, and your way should always be our desire of our heart. We love you. We thank you. Use us for your glory. We give you praise for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks again, folks. Have a wonderful evening. God bless. Bye.